Visit SayRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to install a SayRight rigid support strut on a Dodger frame. This also would work for a Bimini. This old Dodger is in need of being replaced. It was tensioned with adjustable webbing straps, but we're going to replace those with rigid support struts, which must be done before we can pattern the new Dodger. Here's a look at the new Dodger. We have a tutorial video showing how to make this Dodger if you'd like to view that. Okay, so this is the old Dodger, and you can see that there's some openings in this pocket, probably for a webbing strap to come down to this strap eye down here. We also use this here like this, but we're just uh, seeing how the old one fit and that's how they tensioned it. What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna put on a rigid support strut here and come down to here so it's not in the way of anything and that'll put force onto the existing Dodger frame and make it very nice. So in this tutorial video, we're gonna show you how to install the rigid support strut and bed it appropriately in your fiberglass. Let's get started. We'll disassemble the frame and install the jaw slide first. This is the uh, equi equipment that comes with one of our rigid support struts. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to install this on a boat. We're gonna be installing it on a Dodger, but it could be installed on a Bimini as well. This jaw slide has to go on here and we're gonna put it above here. We do have rigid support struts that have jaw slides that open up so you don't have to remove this hardware. This type of hinged jaw slide is included in the premium rigid support strut kits. But for us, we're simply going to remove uh, this hardware and uh, reinstall it back the way it was. I'm going to put a, a marker mark here to, to indicate where this was. We're going to release these uh, set screws here and also down here. Yep, we did it. This has to come down. Sometimes it's hard at the end. There we go. We've got to release this set screw on the jaw slide so that it doesn't interfere like that. And then we're going to install this so that the, I can get access to the screw so it's going to be like this. Okay, let's just tighten this up here. We're under some slack just to keep it in place. And that's enough just to keep it up there. Then we'll reassemble just like we tore apart. We're going to set it right on our mark and lock it down and then we'll set it in here and lock it down. So there is no right or wrong position in here, but I like to have it as high as I possibly can, but still have it away from the skirt edge. So right here is about perfect. And I'm gonna lock this down and we're gonna put a eye end on this. We'll measure and cut the tubing to size. You get a 36 inch stick, two of them. Okay, so our tubing is gonna go from here and then I'm gonna mount this right about here, uh, which will be in line with my, uh, <coughs> edge of the Dodger frame. So if I measure that, I want to measure all the way to where the tubing would rest into that part. And I'd say 24 and a half is probably the optimal length of my tubing to cut. Stainless steel tubing can be cut with a hacksaw. You won't have one of these machines. We're going to use one of these. This is what we use here at Say All Right. I've attached an eye end and the flat mount uh, to this tubing that we just cut and I want to make sure that the screw is out and this is uh, pointing towards the uh, cockpit and I'll just put it all the way up here make sure it goes all the way to the base which it is and I'm not going to cinch it down super hard because I might have to twist it a little bit so that should be good right there and then we can put it on the deck and I'm going to try to make get it someplace flat, but it doesn't have to be perfectly flat. 
as you can see, it needs to be twisted a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, like right about there. I think that looks pretty good. And it looks like it's in line with our frame. Next up, we'll show you how to drill and bed the mount plate appropriately. So I'm happy with this uh, position. I'm gonna just mark the bottom hole here with a Sharpie. And then I can move this or you just let it dangle. Uh, I would put some tape on the uh, drill bit to indicate where I need to stop. But this is super thin. There are two layers and unfortunately, uh, that requires us to through through bolt, which is not a bad thing. I actually like doing that So I'm going to start with an eighth inch drill bit and we are going to go through both surfaces and I'll show you what we do inside uh, The uh, cabin here, so I'm going to try to drill nicely here Just to, with a smaller bit first and then we go to a larger bit So I'm through my first surface and I'm against my second one. I'm gonna go past the tape because I'm gonna through bolt and I'm gonna go slowly. Okay, so I'm all the way through. So it's not very thick here. Uh, thicker applications, I'd probably just use a wood screw. Okay, so that's our eighth inch bit. So now I'm gonna drill the top hole and all I'm gonna do is just take this off because I can't get access to the top hole. So I can line it up with the bottom hole. So I'll line it up and then I'll take my Sharpie and I want to make sure that it's going up and down. So I'm going to put a point right there and we're going to drill an eighth inch hole at that location in the same manner that we did that one. Okay, we're doing the same thing again. We went to the hardware store and got a 1032 stainless steel screw. And then we got a stainless steel washer, stainless steel lock washer, and then one of these nuts with a cap on it, which will look make it look great inside. I'm going to use an 11 30 seconds drill bit to enlarge this eighth inch hole. If the fiberglass were a little thicker there would be no need to through bolt and we would have used a number 10 screw and for sheet metal and only drilled deep enough to provide for the length of the screw used. Usually a three quarter inch length screw for this deck fitting. That's all there is to it. We're going to uh, countersink that hole with, uh, this is a 3 8 inch countersink bit and this helps to prevent uh, spidering of the fiberglass and it also uh, helps the butyl tape to sink into the cavity. So that should be just about perfect. So now we're going to put the uh, uh, screws in that we're, we've chosen to use and we're going to use butyl tape to bed this. Nice thing about butyl tape is that it never gets hard over time and uh, it uh, seals everything beautifully. And it's not like silicone, where if you put silicone on uh, for a bedding application, even a marine silicone, it can cause uh, dirt to settle to it. And it also can become embedded in your fiberglass, uh, which is not good. So we're gonna take the butyl tape and we're gonna go around each of the bases like this, around each one of the um, bolts. And we'll do it here as well. I also like to take a little bit of butyl tape and actually push it into the hole like that just to make sure it gets in there. This is probably overkill, but hey, why not? Now we're going to take our hardware with the screw facing out so we can gain access to it. And this hole is going to have, or the size of the hole is going to require us to screw it in a little bit. So let me just show you that after I get repositioned. because it's just about the perfect size, but it does create a few small threads. So we're gonna screw these in all the way until the screw comes out the backside, and then we'll go in the cabin and show you what's next. So we're gonna put a washer on here, and then we're gonna put a lock washer on, and then the nut with a cap on it. Okay, and we'll do the same thing down below and we'll tighten it up with two people, one on the inside and one on the outside. After you've got everything tightened out, you should have butyl tape that uh, comes out from beneath your fastener. And you could just take a wad of butyl tape and do this, and it actually cleans up pretty nicely. Okay, we're gonna put the eye end back on here and not cinch it down all the way, because we might have to pivot it a little bit. 
which I do, which should be right there about. And then we'll put this screw in. Now we'll lock all the set screws down and we have a beautiful rigid support. And then we can tension it this way by loosening this and pulling it down or up. Okay, beautiful. So each rigid support kit comes with two of these systems, so you can do it on the starboard and port side. The rigid support strut on the starboard side is now installed. We just need to install the next one that comes in the kit on the port side. Then we can remove the old dodger and pattern for this new dodger, which looks great. See a tutorial video on how to build that dodger in the description below or the bimini behind it. Also in that description below, you'll find the tools list and the materials that we use to install this rigid support strut. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.